So I shared a video a while back covering my top tips for converting your very own camper van. And one of those tips I covered was talking about how to build from your core needs first and then build out from there. Now, I would say that this is still probably my top tip for those looking to do a DIY conversion like I have done. And since I have decided to rip apart our entire van and redo the cabinetry to better suit my needs as a nature photographer and video maker, I thought that it would be a good opportunity to revisit this tip and show you guys how I went about building my cabinetry from the heart of my van first. So today we're going to be talking about how I built our electrical cabinet in the back, which is on our driver's side of the van. Now, what I'm not going to be doing is going into a deep dive of the electrical system itself. Now, if you want to watch what I did in the electrical system, then you can go ahead and watch the video by clicking the link down below. There's not really major changes going on with the electrical system here. The only thing I did change was I had to remake the battery wires for the negative and the positive side so that they were the same length and that's just because the routing is a little bit different than in the previous. You want to make sure that your lengths of wire are very or pretty much the same so that things discharge and recharge at the same rate. Now I'm also not going to really talk about the brains of the electrical system because this isn't my IP or an electrical property. If you guys want a great resource and in-depth breakdown of the same exact power system I'm using, I will link explorers.life's video down below as they are the ones that provided this schematic for me. So I want to make sure that I give credit where credit is due. So to kick off this build, we actually are jumping in the computer where I used a program called SketchUp to design our cabinetry. So the main goal with both cabinets back in the garage area was to make them as uniform as possible and to minimize the horizontal waste. We had a lot of horizontal waste in the last van. Now we're going to have a great space in the back for storage. With the electrical cabinet, I also wanted to create more of a professional and finished look. So we redesigned the component organization so that we had access to everything, but they also could have covers so it looked finished. Now our finished depth for the cabinet was going to be 57 inches, so it would be a total of 60 inches from the back of the van. After we had everything designed out and the way we liked it, I went ahead and printed off cut sheets and we started cutting all of our elements. We mainly used three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood for this build, but we also used a half inch piece that was left over from our other cabinetry that we're working with to make the fake face that covered where the batteries go. The last piece of wood that we would use is a sheet of quarter inch that we cut for the slider doors that hide all of our electrical components. We did all of the cutting once, mainly using a table saw, and then we would use a track saw at times, and lastly our chop saw for cutting lengths of the smaller pieces. After all of the cutting and organizing was done, it was time for the assembly process. The beauty of designing everything in SketchUp before building means that I knew exactly where everything was going to be laid out. So I could actually easily drill holes in the various panels before assembly. Each hole I drilled, I made sure to start the hole from one side and then I would come from the back side to ensure that I didn't have any major blowouts or chip outs. I then pre-drilled where a lot of the components were going to sit so it would be easier to screw in later. For the assembly, we mainly used Craig pocket hole jig joints. We were careful to lay these out to ensure that we had a decent spread of screws while maintaining a uniform and professional look. We made sure to use ample amounts of wood glue and clamps to ensure a nice finished edge. And for the slider door, we actually made two separate channels, which are known as dados. For the top panel, we just used the base that the batteries would go on, and then we created a small separate piece for the bottom. The top panel notch 
was cut just slightly deeper so that we could get the sliders in and out. We then used a drill press with a four center bit to cut notches so our fingers had a place to grab and pull the sliders open and close. Now I'm going to pause here real quick to introduce myself. If you guys have not watched any of my content before, my name is Riley Clark. I am a nature photographer based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. The primary goal of this channel is to take you guys on my adventures out in the wild. Now, as of recent, I've been doing a lot more camper van DIY and build projects and, and camping reviews. So if you guys enjoy watching some outdoor content and the occasional review, then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And if you've learned anything or gotten any inspiration from this video so far, maybe consider giving it a like button so that the algorithm maybe wants to show it to more people. But let's get back to why you clicked on the video and that is finishing our electrical cabinet. <laughs> The first piece for the finish was to put edge banding on all of the plywood edges. This edge banding is just a small birch veneer with heat activated glue on the back. And then we just used a flush trim bit once it was dried to clean up the edges. We then sanded everything with 180 grit sandpaper and made sure to get the edges so the edge banding blended better with the wood. It also tapers the edges so there's not anything that is sharp that can cause cuts or damage to other elements. After we did the initial sanding with 180 grit, we went back over everything with 220 grit sandpaper, which gave everything a nice smooth finish. It was then time to hit the cabinet with the first coat of primer. This primer was paired with the paint at the store. What it does is helps block the wood grain from coming through and also will ensure a stronger bonding for the paint itself. After the required drying time, I did some light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper again, and then I used a damp towel to wipe down everything. I then applied a second coat for good measure. Once that second coat was dried, I followed the same exact regimen, except this time I used our paint of choice. Once everything was painted and looking great, I went over the insides of the cabinets with a sealant finish that also has a hardener inside of it, which provides a nice look and moisture resistance. I went ahead and pre-installed all the main components in the system, and then I slid the cabinet into place. From there, I started to actually reassemble my full electrical system. Besides the four aught wire changes I mentioned earlier, I also ran a new ethernet cable, which runs to a switch up in my main switch panel that will allow for me to control my inverter using that switch. I can also use a Bluetooth access from my phone through the Victron app to control the inverter, but I thought that throwing this switch in would be a nice element so I didn't have to always pull my phone out to turn the inverter on. Before I put the batteries in, I went ahead and used self-tapping bolts that tied into where our structural steel for the bed also goes. These are the same bolts we used in the last build and they really had a strong hold. After this was done, I placed the batteries and wired those in and went ahead and tested the system. Once everything was good, we installed the covers, did some touch-up paint, and that's a wrap on this project. Now, if you guys are looking for some more inspiration or maybe some design help, you can go ahead and actually download my SketchUp file for the electrical cabinet, as well as the cut sheets that we used by clicking the link down in the description below. There is no extra cost to you. All you need to do is click the link, give me your email, and I will send this over to you ASAP. That is all I have for you in today's episode. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you have not already and the bell icon to be notified when I post the next video where we are going to be talking about all of the necessary components you need to perfect your plumbing in your camper van.